Hey guys, Tyler here with PPC Foundry. Today, I wanted to talk to you about what are the proper settings to set up in your campaign when you're making a search campaign. Uh, there's a lot of information out there. Um, so I wanted to go over the best practices that we use when setting up search campaigns. This is super simple, um, but we'll talk about kind of the reason why we wanna set these settings up the way that we will. So. Uh, we'll just get straight to it, guys. We'll jump into a screen share of a demo account, and we'll kind of walk through creating our search campaign. All right, so typically when you sign into your Google Ads account, you're going to get dropped off here on the overview page. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and head over to campaigns here. So you'll typically be already here, but if not, just make sure you click on campaigns, and then you're going to come over to the campaigns menu um, and select that. Uh, you can see we already have a test campaign that we've made a while back, but what we're going to do is we're just going to hit this blue plus button to create a new campaign, and we're going to hit new campaign here as well. So depending on really what you're doing, for most people, you're probably wanting to generate leads. So this is what we're going to select here. And the reason that we're doing that is this sets an objective um, for campaigns. So then we can see any conversions that we have in the account. If you don't have it set up already, don't worry about it. Um, you can move forward. You just probably won't be able to select a bidding strategy. Sometimes they won't allow you to do max conversions or anything if you don't have any conversion goals set up. Um, but we'll have a separate video on how you actually set up conversions within your Google Ads account. So um, if you didn't have anything you wanted to update here, you can click this to remove it. Um, if you have a bunch of different ones, but otherwise typically it'll default to just account goals. So you can click here to continue. And then for this instance, the campaign type that we're wanting to create is a search campaign. So we're just gonna select that search here. Um, now you can select other ways you'd like to reach your goal. So this would set up um, additional things such as you know setting up a call only ad, which they're getting rid of here soon. Um, store visits, website visits, lead forms. So just give some other context to um, some different stuff that can be set up for your conversion action. So we'll go ahead and click continue. And then we'll just name our search, which we'll have right here. You can name it whatever you want. Um, typically, if you're an agency, you have some type of syntax that you follow just for keeping things consistent. Um, typically, I would do... Um, whatever the service is, uh, location, and then sometimes budget, um, if it's important to see the budget at that level. So now here we can see that we have the bidding type that we want. Um, there's a lot of debate on what you should start off with, but you can definitely do conversions. Um, I typically would start off with clicks, so maximize clicks. Um, from this that you you basically are just testing out and getting data in quickly. Um, and then from there, you're trying to move to maximize conversions um, and then ideally some type of target cost per acquisition or um, some other advanced strategy. But starting off with max clicks is great and that might be your only option if you haven't set up any conversion actions yet. So um, I wouldn't worry about these things right here. Um, now, this is very important. So this network setting, they're always going to try to display this as recommended. You don't want to do this. You want to make sure that both of these are unchecked. Um, the reason being is the Google Display Network is basically going to show a text ad um, in the display network. So this could be on different websites. It says, you know, across different uh, apps, across like YouTube, but it could be you know, partner websites, obviously YouTube as well, but it's just so low quality, it's not worth it um, for most search campaigns. So definitely check this off. And then search partner network. There was a time when this was okay, um, but of recent, this network just seems to have been hijacked by a lot of spam. Um, so from here, it's just good practice from now on just to keep this unchecked as well. Uh, same thing, like this could be other non-related Google websites that, you know, show search results, different stuff like that. So we basically just don't want this. Now, uh, what you want to do here is obviously put in your location targeting. Um, so I don't know what has Nigeria today, but 
we will just select the US. Now this is important as well is on this location options. You want to make sure you do that drop down and you want to select here this presence people in or regularly in your included locations. So you don't want this presence or interest, even though it does say recommended. The reason why is because, you know, if you're trying to advertise locally, you want people that live here are in your target location. Um, present or interest means that someone could have been doing some research, a state over in that location, or maybe they literally were, you know, flying to the airport there, looking up different things that for some reason the algorithm picks up that they're interested in your area, but they actually do not reside in your location. So selecting this option is very important to make sure that you have a good um, setup for your search campaign. Now this is another one too. Um, sometimes it will say all languages, or if you don't have a language, I think it defaults to that, yeah. So just make sure you put in the language that you want. So if we're trying to hit, you know, the US, most people will speak English, or if your product is, you know, in a different language like Spanish, um, French, whatever it may be, just make sure that those are there as well. Now, a cool thing to understand about languages is it's going to be based when, when you set it here, it doesn't mean that they can't necessarily read English, it's just that their browser is set like that's their language setting for their browser so that's what you're saying here is people's browser language is set to english which by default most people is going to be set to english unless they go change it to spanish or something but like you could still target people in spanish they can obviously read english but that's just what they've set their default browser to so that's kind of the context behind the language um you don't need to do anything for audience segment, but this is a best practice I would recommend is finding just a bunch of different segments that relate to um, whatever it is that you're doing search ads for. Even if it doesn't seem super relevant, um, you can still select it because basically what we want to do is we want to put it in observation. So observation basically is just going to look at these audience types. So it could be in market, it could be um, demographics of like employment types of jobs, um, you know, say if for whatever reason you're in some type of real estate industry, um, I believe there's some stuff for moving. Yeah, you, you might have to browse these different ones to see what makes sense. But the reason that you want to set them up now is because down the road, you can use these in your search campaign to do what's called layering. And layering allows you to do either official targeting or you can just do bid adjustments based on um, these different audience segments. Because if you don't set these up now, that data isn't retroactive. So Google can't go back if you put them on two weeks from now. They're not going to show the audience data from the searches that have happened for the last two weeks. So it's good to put them on now so that you can see that data, see where conversions are coming from, see what correlations are between these different audiences, and you can start to do bid adjustments. And then down the road, when you find real winners um, or you're very confident in the audience types, you can set up search campaigns that just target those people. So they would have to match these audiences to make sure that they're getting targeted. So hopefully that makes sense, but definitely recommend setting up the observation audiences. And then ideally, you're probably going to keep this off for now. Um, you don't really want this on because we're not going to target broad keywords. Um, we'll go into a different segment um, on setting up campaigns and some strategies on how to structure your campaign. But again, the purpose of this video is just to talk about the settings for the campaign. Now. Um, some additional settings they have here. Typically, we just leave this um, ad rotation optimized for the best performing ads. Uh, you can rotate the ad. So the reason that you may want to do this is if you have um, two different ads that you want to split test. So typically, we would do this back in the day when we just had uh, expanded text ads where we would test, you know, ad creative and landing pages, but with how the responsive search ads are now, there's so many different headlines that uh, that's not really the best philosophy. But if you wanna have two different landing pages that you're testing um, with the same ad copies and different headlines that they are, 
this would be the way to do that is that you would just rotate those two. Um, so that would be the option you'd pick if you want to kind of split test two different landing pages for the same campaign or ad group. Um, otherwise, you can just leave it just for the best performing ads. And then you can set a start end date. Um, so if you only want your campaign to run to a specific time. Um, now this is a, a great thing to know as well is you can adjust your ad schedule. So by default, it's going to show all days, basically 24 seven. Um, some things that you can do is adjust your times for when you're in the office. So you only want to make sure that you're getting ads or, or um, sorry, leads or calls when you're in the office or if you have a limited budget, this is a great strategy to say, hey, we only have $1,000. How can we make it go farther each day? Because you're going to set the campaign up with a daily budget. Maybe you only advertise 20 days out of the month instead of all 30. So then you can just set, you know, maybe we just do Monday through Friday. We're only going to advertise 20 days and not on the weekends. Or you can customize what those days are if you want to make sure you're on the weekends, whatever it is. Um, but then you can allocate a higher daily budget that's not going to exceed that thousand, right? So that's a good strategy if you're working with a smaller budget. And then uh, you don't really need to worry about these items unless you're doing some advanced tracking. So this is kind of where you would set up different UTM parameters, um, tracking template. Uh, would be probably in some kind of system like HubSpot where you would put in basically what these different items mean, um, like it says, as a template, and it's going to attach that to anything in your campaign. Um, nothing you really need to do here, typically. And then brands, if there's different brands that you want to make sure that you're not showing up with, um, that it's important, you can add those here to make sure that you're not showing alongside those. So. Um, basically from there, you just click next and then it's going to go through the ad creation process. Um, we're just going to skip this for now. Cause again, we'll talk about, um, actual campaign setup in a different video. So we'll just go through here. So basically it's going to walk you through all these different things of, you know, what we've just did of our bidding, uh, strategy, campaign settings, uh, keyword asset generation, which we skipped, um, and all of this. So we'll just jump down here to budget. So again, uh, Google ads works on setting a daily budget for yourself. Um, so whatever that equals out to for the month. So again, if you're working with a smaller budget, you can limit the amount of days that you advertise by setting your ad schedule. Um, and that will inc make it go further each day. So that would be a good recommendation. And then basically, once you're done with that, it's going to give you a uh, your campaign's almost ready to publish. Obviously, we have some errors because we didn't create, um, uh, we didn't put a budget in. Uh, sometimes it's going to ask you to do things you don't necessarily need to do in this like builder. And then you'll see a publish button up here, and then it'll publish the campaign. So, and then you can review everything right here as well. So I think if we just do this, let's put. $20, we should see that publish because it doesn't need to have, yeah. So it doesn't need to have any ad groups, keywords, or ads built in it right now. It'll still publish the campaign and it'll give you a little warning. And then you can go back into the campaign and start adding those things from there. See, it already has the ad group, but there's nothing in it. So then I could go back and create more ad groups or whatever I need to do. So. Um, I hope you guys found this video super helpful on just using the right settings when creating a search campaign. Um, feel free to leave a comment below if you had any questions or if you didn't like it or if you didn't agree, whatever. Um, but I also hope that you would subscribe if you want more content like this. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.